Pluto, an ex-planet and now the most famous dwarf planet in our solar system, is hiding somewhere far, far away in its dark corner. The temperature of Pluto's surface is freezing. I mean, wow! At first sight, it's just a distant, icy, and barren celestial body. But could Pluto be hiding something? Maybe even life? Scientists found out that, despite it being so far from the Sun, its interior is still warm. It's been that way ever since Pluto formed. Under the haze-layered atmosphere of Pluto, there's a frigid surface full of craters and impure water ice. There's also a large impact basin flooded by frozen nitrogen. And below that icy crust could be an internal ocean. When the surface of a planet stretches, it mostly leaves many fractures behind. The same goes with Pluto. You can see there are numerous cracks across its water ice crust. They're of all ages. Some even possibly date from 4.5 billion years ago, from the times when Pluto was still forming. The dwarf planet probably grew because it slowly accumulated small pieces of icy material. It condensed during the time when the outer region of our solar system was forming. This process was going intensely and fast enough to melt the base of the icy layer. The surface of Pluto extended as liquid water at the top of the ocean froze onto the base of its ice crust during its first half billion years. The ocean may have stopped freezing for the next billion years. The buildup of radioactive heat temporarily balanced the rate of heat escape to space. But as Pluto produced less radioactive heat over time, the roof of its interior ocean continued to freeze, and it probably turned into a 120 miles thick layer between the rock and ice. Crusts were the first hint there might be an ocean there. Scientists got the second potential piece of evidence when they realized the icy shell had managed to glide across an essentially frictionless interior and reorient itself. And it's not just about the ocean here. The cool thing is that wherever there's water, there could be life. A potential ocean under an icy crust is not something that possibly exists only on Pluto. Some icy moons of our solar system have it too, like Saturn's moons Enceladus and Titan, and Jupiter's Europa. Enceladus and Europa could both have salty liquid oceans. Plus, they have similar water plumes erupting from their interior. These geysers tell us these moons have their own source of energy, probably because of radiation or gravity. Either way, that energy is what could support life. Have you heard of Ceres? It's our closest dwarf planet, the biggest object in the asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars, and the first asteroid we discovered at the beginning of the 19th century. People even called it a planet then. Although it's not so popular, there's a possibility Ceres has a subsurface ocean too. Geysers could be the first sign of that. The water vapor plume could be a result of a meteorite strike that exposed subsurface ice to outer space. Ceres may have its own atmosphere, too. This dwarf planet is relatively far from the Sun, but its surface temperature could go up to minus 37 degrees Fahrenheit. At these temperatures, if there was water ice at its surface, it would quickly change to gas. And this could create an atmosphere around this intriguing dwarf planet. Not just oceans, there are many volcanoes across our solar system, too. Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Io, one of Jupiter's moons, have them. But apart from the Earth, Io is the only one that has more than 400 active volcanoes. 150 of them erupt at any given time. Scientists suspect there could be some volcanic activity on Venus and Jupiter's moon Europa, too. But they can't check if that's true because Venus has an extremely thick atmosphere and Europa has a thick ice shell. And even though volcanoes in other spots are no longer active, we know they used to be because of specific landforms they left behind. Hills, valleys, plains, mountains, and especially lava channels. It's like when you're watering your plants on the front porch, you see water flowing down your sloped driveway along specific pathways. This creates small channels, a lot like lava does. Our moon may have also had active volcanoes back in the age when dinosaurs were still roaming around. If they had had telescopes, they might have seen something spectacular. Lava fiercely oozing from the surface of the moon. Astronauts took images of Ina, an unusual volcanic deposit on the moon. And there are 70 similar patches in the volcanic plains they found on the side of the moon that faces our planet. Some of them are over a billion years old, 
but some could have been formed less than 100 million years ago, and dinosaurs went extinct 66 million years ago. Speaking of dinosaur extinction, could Jupiter have been the main culprit for that? No one knows where this space rock that hit our home planet 66 million years ago came from, especially with such force. It left a crater off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. And it probably caused earthquakes, tsunamis, and fierce volcanic eruptions that brought troubles not only to dinosaurs, but to nearly three-quarters of all animal and plant life on Earth. But some believe Jupiter was the one that flung the comet into the Earth. Gravity is a tricky force that can make the solar system act like a big pinball machine. Jupiter is our most massive planet, which means it has extremely strong gravity. It's like a guardian of our solar system that kicks many incoming comets away, sometimes bringing them pretty close to the Sun. As they get there, these comets can experience extremely strong tidal forces that break them apart and, in the end, create long chunks of a comet. And one of these chunks probably went towards the Earth. Have you heard of the story of Triton? Neptune has 13 moons, and Triton is the largest of them. It's the only giant moon in our solar system that has a retrograde orbit. It means it circles its parent planet in the opposite direction of its rotation. Scientists believe that's because Triton used to be in the Kuiper Belt, a disk-shaped area located in the outer solar system, I mean past Neptune's orbit. And it's possible that Neptune's gravitational force pulled it out of that region millions of years ago. Pluto may have originated within the Kuiper Belt, too. Pluto and Triton are almost the same. They have similar density, mass, and surface material. Now Triton is locked away in synchronous rotation with its parent planet Neptune, far away from what we believe is its homeland. Now, the most distant object we've discovered so far in our solar system is a mysterious planetoid called, wait for it, far, far out. One astronomical unit is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, around 92 million miles. Well, far, far out is 132 astronomical units from the Sun, four times farther away than Pluto. Since it's so far away, far, far out needs about a thousand years to finish a single circle around the Sun. Far out! Have you ever imagined what would happen if two gas giants collided? I mean, the chances are small. But if something like this happened, not much matter would be lost. Although it depends on the angle and the speed of impact. A head-on collision would make them completely merge and not lose any matter at all, whether we're talking about their gaseous envelopes or their solid cores. But at high speed, their two cores would merge and both planets would lose most of their envelope gas. At very, very high speeds, bam, both are gone. If there was an oblique collision, two cores could completely avoid each other. Planets would merge, but a substantial fraction of their gases would vanish into space. And in a very oblique collision, kind of like a sideswipe, planets would keep going like nothing happened. There's no evidence for that, but one theory even says Jupiter and Saturn, or at least one of them, might have formed by merging from smaller gas planets. Yep, it's all about gas. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.